In this video, we're going to be making stone ruins out of XBS foam, and then I'm going to show you how I like to paint my stone. So the first thing we're going to do is make up some more bricks and start placing these bricks down onto some parchment paper along with a square. Now for this first section, I put a line of glue down and began gluing those in place along that square to make sure everything lined up correctly. But as I went on each piece, I decided to make them by just gluing the first two together at an angle and then building off of that. Still using the square just to make sure that those were still straight and even. And then from there, it was just a matter of stacking up and continuing to glue bricks in place until it got to a size of a wall that I really liked. Now for the one of these pieces, I decided I was going to have a bit of a platform with some wood, so I just took some scrap XBS foam and cut that down to some pillars that looked about the right size. From there, I just added some texture with a brass wire brush until it looked at a, some old hewn lumber and then hot glued that all together. And I'm sure that if you had some balsa wood, you could also make some really awesome wood details with that, or even just some more popsicle sticks stacked up, but I chose to go with the XPS foam. Did a little bit of a test fit just to make sure it sat up in there nicely, and then I decided to use popsicle sticks for the wood to just kind of experiment and see how that would work as some planks. In the end, I was very happy with how that turned out. So to make it look a little bit more ruined, I went ahead and snapped some of those to get some rough edges, left a hole in there, and then towards this bottom corner, I just spaced them out far enough that it left a bit of a gap at the end so that I could go through and have a chunk missing. Next, all I did was cut those off where they needed to be to get to the right length, and then just take a steel brush to add some texture to those. The nice thing about the steel brush on the wood is it'll actually kind of just tear out the softer material there, and you're still left with the natural wood grain. Now from there, all I had to do was hot glue each of these in place, making sure to have a bit of a gap in between them that'd be kind of even throughout the whole thing, uh, just to make it look a little more uniform. And then for this last one, I did trim down just the edge of it, just so it sit on there nicely and flush with that wall, just to make sure that it fit into the stone. Next thing I did from there was just take my pliers and kind of rip out that corner, and then take that brass brush again, just to kind of add a bit of a rougher texture to the end of those posts. Take a little bit of a scrap piece of popsicle stick and just hot glue that over the hole look, make it look a little bit more like it was patched intentionally and then from there I could just hot glue it into place. Now when I did test this it was a little bit uneven and kind of wanted to lean so I just took some more bricks and just worked those into place just to extend out the walls in a way that I thought looked natural and kind of kept that same random pattern at the end. Now I repeated the same basic steps all the way through except for that platform until I got some modular pieces that could be stacked up and moved around in any orientation. Nice thing, they all stacked together neatly too. But from there it was time to Mod Podge these, so I just took a damp brush and began applying a heavy coat all over these, making sure to get in those cracks so that by the time we go through and prime these I don't have to worry about the foam melting it. Next we went on to my favorite painting method for stone, and that is to take a sponge and kind of just do some different colors. I chose red and yellow for this and just began to sponge that randomly all over the stone. This always seems to be the step where I find myself saying to myself that I just need to trust the process and this will all work out, and it usually does. After you've dry brushed this and added your different layers of gray, it makes the stone look a lot more natural and almost like a granite. Now for my actual gray tone that I used for this, I did mix up it a little bit and add a little bit of that burnt umber to it just to kind of get a warmer tone to the gray. From there, I'll just add a little bit more white into that and just dry brush over the entire thing in lighter and lighter coats each time all the way up until I get to white. From there, I'll make sure I'm doing downward strokes just to catch the tops of those bricks and of course along the top edges just to make sure you get nice, heavy contrast. Next, I just took my burnt umber and put that all over the wood planks. I did do two coats just to get a good coverage and then from there, I just took the smaller makeup brush and a yellow sienna mixed with some of this burnt umber and just slightly dry brushed over those boards. Really focusing on the ends of the boards and the grain just to really dry out that detail and also make it look a bit more weathered. Made sure to get underneath there and then from there it was on to the final step which was foliage. So for that I just made some of my moss paste with some PVA glue and fine flocking and began to spread that all around the models. So on the ends of boards where water might pool up and Anywhere that just kind of adds a little bit of extra detail. It can be really liberal with this and I think it looks great and really adds a lot of life to your builds. 
So in the stones, I'll really focus that more along the cracks and on top surfaces, just to make it look like the moss is kind of climbing and spreading around naturally. But once you've done all that, you can get all of these awesome pieces that really work well together. They can be rearranged, stacked up, and used in all sorts of configurations. Now at first, I place these down onto some of my dungeon tiles that I had made in the previous video, and then just kind of rearrange them so you can see what they might look like on your tabletop. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.